Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show. And as you can see, we have a guest today, so I expect wholeheartedly that you will be polite as we roll in the Thunderdome. So, Joanne, how are you? I'm kind of deaf right now. <laughs> We do get a little loud. That's why we ask That's for speakers okay. to go down. You know what's funny? Mm. My voice today, um, I've been a bit under the weather, mm -hmm. so I'm a bit croaky. So mm. um, if I start... Getting a little loud? If I start competing, I'll start sounding very, we, very croaky over here. You know, here. I'm very competitive. We can, like, start blasting every speaker <laughs> on the internet. So, hey, I can project, too. Well, that's some seriousness being brought to the Thunder Show. And obviously, you can tell, Joanne is radual, awesome, and she is the host of the wildly popular, 50,000 times bigger than... Rocket Boom, bigger than Wine Library, TV, Rocket Boom, which is a uh, humongous show. The first video blog I ever put eyes on. And as if you know me at all, you know as soon as I saw it, something went like this. Oh, Rocket Boom. I should do something like that. So there's a lot of history there. One of the big things I'm looking to do in 2008 is bring more Web 2.0 personalities. I love using that term. Um, you know, other video bloggers to the set, have them taste some wine. Non-wine professionals probably a lot of the times and I think that brings a great perspective because as you know, it's all about trusting your own palate, getting different points of view and so I'm excited to have you here. Have you been feeling lonely, Gary? You need some company in 2008. I could definitely use some company in 2008. Okay, That's good. a very well, I'm good glad point. I'm here. I'm glad you're here too. Why don't you tell the Vaniacs a little bit about Rocket Boom before we get started? Well, hi Vaniacs. Thank you very much for having me on Gary's show. Gary, thank you very much for having Rocket Boom on your show. Happy to be here. Rocket Boom is a, a curious little video blog that um, talks about internet culture and um, I happen to sit in front of a map um, that'll help you sort of recognize what Rocket Boom is. We have a, a rocket that doesn't look anything like that but... Um... Come on, that was some serious effort. <laughs> I thought my art skills were up. Well, you're right, it's got a little bit... That's not bad. That's not bad. No, that's not bad. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, you can find us online, rocketboom.com and we talk about the kinds of things that are going on on the internet that you might want to be aware of um, and that's, that's pretty much it. We talk about a lot of different things all over the place. It is an absolute must for anybody that's cool. There's nothing else to say. I mean, it's something, Ma, you're shaking your head because you don't watch it. You, I know you. <laughs> the, uh, the entire staff at Wine Library for well over a year uh, watched it every single day. We still watch it quite a bit. It's a definite must for me. It's RSSed up and I'm well, super, you, super pumped to have you here. Now, what's really fun for me is, uh, and before anything else, Ma, Link it up. We've got to give a, one of my favorite episodes. So scroll down, link one of my favorite episodes from October, I think, of last year. So check that out and definitely subscribe. It is, but they don't, they don't, they don't need any more subscribers, actually. There's only, what, five <laughs> Please, trillion? Please, more, more, more. <laughs> the other really fun thing for me to do is, and maybe we'll do, well, we can't do it off on camera, but the one fun thing is when I have these people, these personalities, these wonderful different folks on the show, when I get here, I want to try to catch them off guard unless they watch this episode and now we'll know the trick to what they like. So we've got three very different wines here and we talked off camera before we sat down. So why do we have a Crow's Hermitage, a Spanish wine, and a Bubbly? Why is that? Well, first of all, people who watch Rocket Boom know that I'm pretty much a teetotaler. Mm -hmm. So this will come as a bit of a surprise. I do drink alcohol, but um, that's largely because being English and having parents that speak French um, I spent a lot of time in France growing up. We would go over to France, we would sort of pack up for the summer and get over there and go traveling. And um, probably from about the age of six, I would be drinking wine at dinner, which is not unusual if you're a European. Your parents water it down a bit, which of course, anyone who drinks wine is never ever gonna water down their wine, but they do that for kids so that you start to develop taste. It means that you're not left out at the dinner table. The kids are drinking what mum and dad are drinking, which is fair. And you know, from a very early age, you're drinking wine and you're not drinking much of it. Your parents aren't trying to get you drunk, but they're just, it's part of the social experience in Europe. And no especially when you're in it. the Mediterranean countries, how can you not sit down and drink wine? And so very fortunately, um, I, I feel as if I've had wine for a very long time. I lived in um, Aix-en-Provence and Marseille and Lyon and Paris. And so those are very wine centric regions. My no mother question. now lives, um, sort of in the southern Bordeaux region. So again, that opens up the door to a whole other sure. brand and, and species of wine. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that I've ever felt afraid of because I think you speak to people who have maybe had that kind of, I don't know wines, what am I doing? But, um, you know, gosh, it's just great stuff. Get it, get it down your throat, you know? The Celebrate. The fundamental <laughs> difference between Europe and really almost every other major wine-growing 
region in the world. And the U.S. is, you know, we're archaic in a lot of our thought processes towards wine because the alcohol, you know, we're one of the only countries, we had prohibition, it wasn't that long ago. So our view on alcohol in this country is a little bit different. And so, no question, palates are developed and brought up at a much younger age, a much, much younger age in almost every other country. And obviously, um, you know, people that are influenced with the French or the Italian culture especially get in you know, kindergarten, they like, mom puts you to school and puts a little half bottle of wine in your lunch bags. So, you know, it's a totally different scene. Now, we're starting off with this wine today. Um, this is the uh, Rousseau 2004 Crows Hermitage, which is a blend of Syrah, uh, mainly Syrah with a little bit of uh, Grenache. It's 24 US bones. And, uh, and uh, you mentioned, Joanne, that you wanted a Crows Hermitage, and where did that thought pop from? I think it's the, um Chateauneuf du Pape, Syrah, sort of the classic kind of, um, and I don't know, Lyon is considered the gastronomic capital mm -hmm. of France, yeah. and so that can be intimidating because you, you, you're having dinner with people if you're in that part of the world who are taking their food and therefore their wine very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm, I, I don't really identify to the, um, the wine snobbery, if I can say that, of, mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily know good wines. And when I, when you caught me off guard and I walked in here earlier, there were, those were just a few names that popped off popped off the top of my head. Saint Emilion as well. I could have thrown that you out. You could there, have thrown but, that. We've been which are probably all part of the same bunch of wines. But you know, being a Brit, um, we were just talking about this in supermarkets. You go into your local supermarket, and there are wines from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, Especially the southern, you know, Australia, South Africa. Yeah, Chile, very much, Argentina, yeah. very much so, Spain, um, but also Germany, Austria, mm -hmm. Italy. There's just, uh, there's tons of, I mean, we're so, so alcoholic in <laughs> there. There is great, select, you know, that's a big, I was saying, huge fundamental difference between the UK market and the US market when it comes to wine retail is that in the US, the, the best selections are in wine stores, um, whereas in the UK, these you know supermarket chains, odd bins, and all these, but they have great selections, and it's just different culture. It's not as serious. People are much more comfortable with their own palate, and you can see in this nod, the UK dominates in wine thought process, and so we're trying to bring a little bit of that, and really the rest of the world dominates. We are really the only country that's so dominated by the press because of the insecurities, because we're a young wine culture. Really, until the 1980s, was this country really wasn't drinking wine at all, and so that's a big factor. So, well, we, what are you drinking? Coffee. Coca-Cola, we're hot on that. We're hot on Coca-Cola. Now the rest of the world is drinking Coke. That's where they're shining. So anyway, let's get into this. We have some color, which is really nice and dark. Uh, let's swirl around. Now, you need to give this wine a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Yes, I'm familiar with the vocabulary. Je vais renifler, je vais mettre mon nez dans le verre. We need her here more often. A lot of my fans will stop emailing me about pronunciation. It'll be so much better. Now, uh, um... Well, we'll let you go first. What are you, what are you getting? Jello. Um, Jello, good. Um, I feel, okay, this is the other thing you should know about me. Go I ahead. don't drink very often, so I'm already feeling a little bit tipsy. <laughs> very good. No, and, and it, you're laughing, Gary, but it's true. Um, I'm, what, I'm what's referred to in the US as a very cheap date, which I'm not very proud of, but um, I want to say that now because if I... We want to establish that you're a cheap We want to establish that because I don't need to taste this. I'll just be sniffing it and starting to feel a little bit... Um, Happy. This wine comes across with a little bit of funky funk. There's a little hints of strawberry, maybe even strawberry jello. Um, there's also some earthy tones to it, and there's a little subtle like alpine component. Do you get a little bit like of a pine cone kind of, like a, like a pour? <laughs> and that's exactly what yeah, you're thinking. Yeah, I can see the dancing Christmas tree there already. You go. That's there you amazing. Go. So, you know, it's got a little bit of a funkiness on the nose, which I like quite a bit. This is a little bit more in the old world style of Syrah. This is definitely not it's, your cap. It's sort of full and round. It is full and round. Isn't it? It is full yeah, and round. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you know, it's definitely more towards the old world than a new world. This is not your Barossa Valley Shiraz. It's not a lot of your Californias on the nose. Really much more up my alley, as you guys know. Do you like Yeah, yours? you're an old world. I'm you're an, an old, old world, world kind of chap. Guy. Yeah, you're an old yeah. world kind of chap. How, why is that? Well, I was born in Belarus, Russia. I was, yeah. I was born. In, I was. I, I was brought up in a very European household. Okay. Like, mom, I broke my arm. Spit on it. Okay. You know, and like, oh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, no modern medicine. So, you know, you know that thought process. So, give All it a right. roll. Can we spit it out afterwards? Yes, I, I always spit. You'll okay, be at the only guest. You know, most of the, the thing. Most of the, the guests thing. come on here. I have to say this, and they don't spit because they know I do spit. Okay. And they're like, "Yeah, look, he's the wiener." But it's, I'm pretty thrilled that you're now, spitting. Now, here's, here's what's intimidating in the wine tasting process: the spitting, because it's not very ladylike. Mm. Mm. 
Can you giving not, it a bit of a projection? Yeah, I like to That's do that. That's important. Okay. Um, I'm not as worried about the ladylike aspect. Okay. Not you being are? a lady, that Correct. would be. Yeah, well, you know, well, it's go, just, ahead, go ahead. We don't. We're not often. Are we're not excited? often brought to spit in, uh, in our spinning? everyday life. Well, yeah, you know, millions and millions shy. of people I'm are watching. Why that TV. I have to spit? Okay, and the you, um, cover, you can put your like whole hand. the whole suction pump with the mouth is just so that it That's... hits the um, nasal membrane. Yes, you... correct. Very good. You're okay. really trying to experience a lot of different flavors on the palate. That's extremely strong. Hmm? That's you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Very good. And with comedic skills. What I was telling you was, I'm kind of cleaning my teeth with it, rinsing my mouth. Smart. Now give it a little bit of more world, because I think you were so focused on the process. Oh no, I'm good. I'm good to go. It? I'm drunk. It hit my taste buds. <laughs> my saliva what is juice. What do you think? That's uh, it. That's what do you think all I need wine? to know. I'm distracted by all the. Let, let you me know, give, I'm put off by actually tasting the wine right now. Understood. Let me tell you exactly what I'm thinking about this wine. Go ahead. It's got an enormous amount of round, ripe cherries dancing on the mid palate. Has a long finish. Black pepper really integrates nicely on the opening feel. There's a little bit of a lilac component on the tad end of the finish. It's very, very dry, and your mouth clearly puckers. Are you puckered up a little bit? A little bit of, you have a little pucker action? A little bit puckered. She's yeah. a little puckered. So the, the fact of the matter is, is this is a classic food wine. This wine by itself is difficult. You know, most people aren't going to be like, oh great, let's just sip this by the pool or, you know, while we're playing, playing cricket. No, you know, it's a bit more dense than that. that. This is candlelight dinner. Yes. There's a thick tablecloth. And, and almost yeah. you want like, you want like wild boar on the table when you're tasting You almost do. You just want a good cheese, like a good Conte or a good Contal Absolutely. or something I, like that. Or a good Tome from Savoie, something like that. Cheese is pimp. That is one of our things that we talk about on the okay. Thunder Show. So, yes, this is absolutely a food combo type of wine. One that's quite difficult to drink by itself. It's got great complexity. There's some nice mouthfeel. Again, the black pepper cherry combo is really my favorite aspect of this wine. Um, I'm a big fan of Crows. Uh, I agree. I think they're they're very. I think they're value driven. This is actually a pretty expensive Crows Hermitage. You know, they can really roll in at a fifteen to eighteen dollar range. Kind of slipping away now because our dollar is not hanging in quite well. But that being said. You know, it's a solid wine. I'm not gonna go completely crazy on it. I think this is an 88, 89 type point wine. That doesn't mean anything. And it's really quite um, serviceable, but clearly not something that's going to change my life. You, you're kind of insulting me, Gary. Well, I mean, you didn't make the wine, <laughs> right? You didn't make the wine. You didn't even pick the wine. You I said cross okay. I'm I picked the, actually, I messed up. <laughs> if you really think about it in the scope of things. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Can I just ask a question? You can okay, ask there's this whole, questions. there's this whole, oh, it's got, you know, earth and wood and cherries and it's got blackberries Twizzlers, dancing skittles. around inside. Exactly. It doesn't have black pepper, you know, it may as well have fish and chips and a, and a bottle of Heineken in there. The thing is, it doesn't. So, so tell me and tell the Rocket Boom and, and the audience that your audience has heard this a lot, but just sure. in case there's somebody who's watching this thinking, why do we, why do we choose this kind of vocabulary to talk about? So for like, me, because we're just talking about flavors. So for me, and what that does. So for me, fundamentally, um, this is what I taste. You know, like I flat out taste. Like to me, the first time I had an Amarone, when I tasted it, and I was like 21 at the time, really book knowledgeable, but I was just building my palate. I was at a tasting in a restaurant in New Jersey. I was trying an Amarone, and when I drank it, it tasted exactly like a Snickers bar, like milk chocolate. I ran out of the tasting and called my mom and said, "Mom, I can taste the chocolate in Amarone." You know, my mom being awesome is like, great! She had no idea what that meant. But the fact of the matter is, is using that vocabulary is just what I, what I taste. Like, and so a lot of what's been going on with Wine Library TV is kind of funny because sometimes I've brought in flavors that maybe are not as traditional, mm -hmm. um, to say the least, Big League Chew and things of that nature, which is a bubble gum. Okay. That was big. And even things that aren't edible. Yes. But that's, yeah, so. Now I eat them. You know, okay. but, you know, yes, absolutely. So to me, the vocabulary is exactly what the wine brings to the table. Okay. So if it tastes like the corner of a dorm room, you know, at, uh, three guys in a dorm room who don't wash their clothes and it's got that funkiness. Right, that's, and that's not really smell, not taste. Yeah, but you know okay. how subtleties are? I mean, cat pee is a very classic terminology to New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Right. I and again, that's going to be smell, that's not smell, taste. Even yeah. though they put it in a tasting note. So okay. smell and taste kind of vibe, they kind of mix, they kind of come together in wine much more. I mean, I oftentimes 
talk about wine as a human. I talk about charisma. You right, know, right, or right, right. So yes, the singing and dancing it's an kind of yeah. it's an experience right, right. type thing. Okay, I think you're okay. gonna like this wine. This is okay. an exceptionally popular wine. This right here, I'm gonna scoot this over for you so you can whirl it a little bit. Is 83% Syrah, 9% Mouvedre, and 8%. Babal, which is a small indigenous grape uh, to Spain. This is a 93 point Robert Parker wine, 30 US dollars, Finca Sandoval, 2004, and a very different version of Syrah. I think you're going to be experiencing. Jay, if I may call you. Jay, so, cheers. Cheers. Sniffy sniff. Um, yeah, you see, I just get this high from, uh, so you've got, you've got wine on your, um, forehead. Really? <laughs> right on my forehead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a move I like to do. That's okay, that's okay. That's acceptable. Wine's probably good for the skin, the grape. It really is. Tons of beauty products huge, now using the huge. grape. I'm actually signing a huge deal with a cosmetics company that I'll be the face of Are their you? makeup. It's Are you huge. really? It's huge. It's all grape varietal stuff. Anyway, this is... Is that true? No. Oh. This is extremely hedonistic. Okay. On the nose. I knew you were going to say that word. You were, you were prepped for it? Yeah. You should have said it out loud. You would have beat me to the punch and established I would have sounded so good. I would have sounded so good. You missed got a massive first with opportunity. The, but I would have said hedonistic. Which is probably the right way would to have, say it. Probably would have left the audience yeah. behind. Anyway, um, lots of syrupy kind of components. Lots of berries, right? I mean, this is much yeah, more... Yeah, blackberry mm -hmm. sort of um, darker. Huge, no, but it's huge. Yes, and dark fruit and blackberries is exactly what's going on in this nose. This is a very heavy blackberry boysenberry, you know, blueberry kind of very dark fruit component on the nose, very new world. So we're going in the total opposite direction. You know what I don't get past with my nose often is the very, um, alcohol has that very sort of sharp, mm -hmm. uh, spicy, Do you feel like your no little nose hairs are burning? Yeah, it's kind of a, it, it's immediately sort of a very, um, heady kind of, um, you know, balsamic vinegar mm -hmm. kind of no, uh, it, it feeling. Is. You I know, mean, I, I've written on the, the board with the big fat thick black marker, you know, and all of a sudden I've sort of got 100%. that buzz from the alcohol. I mean, alcohol. it comes down to, you know, exercise, right? Oh, it does? I mean, meaning, the more you smell wine, the more the alcohol will go away, and the more the fruit will come to the forefront. Right, like perfume. Correct. The alcohol sure. evaporates, right. and then you can smell the actual uh, flavor. Matt, what do you think about perfume? You're an expert in that category. All right, let's give this a whirl. That was glamorous. Oh, wow, different. Very, very different from what we tasted before. What do you think? I feel like I need to go and clean my teeth. I feel no, like I've fine. got this thick black layer of licorice. Mm. <laughs> but it's super funny that you just use that Buttery term. and licorice -y Because and... this wine is extremely heavy on black licorice. Okay. Oh, good. Do you taste, do you Yay! Taste it? Do you taste it? <laughs> no. Are you serious? I just feel like I have black licorice coating my This teeth. wine is loaded with really dark black licorice, some blackberry fruit, very, very alcoholic. The alcohol is obvious, but the burnt fruit... rubber as well, in a good way. Yeah, no, I love kind the burnt like rubber a... co component. And this is why wine is so awesome. You know, a lot of times you guys are watching at home and I'm using a term and I know you're sitting there saying, what the hell is he talking about? Every palate is going to pick up subtle nuances that others' palates don't. So it's conceivably your natural palate is more powerful than mine. Even though all these years of practice, you're able to pick up a burnt rubber aspect that I am not. You might be the natural. <laughs> yeah, okay, move over. <laughs> Take it over the show. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of this. Do you like this? I like this. I like this. You know, I like this because it's, it's got staying power. Does it have delicious power? But I agree it's with you. Just, stay, and you know you what know, staying power is? That's what we call a long finish. Because this wine is still on your mouth. You're still tasting yeah, the wine yeah. considerably after, you know, a, a length of time after you've actually had it. So big long finish, which if it's got big tannins and your mouth is somewhat bitter, that is the first window into you realizing this wine has long aging potential. So it's a little nugget. It's a little fun fact for all you Vaniacs. That was good work right there. I like that. Anyway, um, this is a wine I enjoy. Not as much as Parker. I'm gonna go maybe 91 plus on it, but I think this wine has a lot of potential. 30 bones, not a screaming deal, but definitely a wine 
if you're on expense account out in a restaurant, you see Finca Sandoval, it is a wine that is getting much more distribution. It's been getting huge score year in, year out, so a lot of people drink it. It's a little, a lot of people like to call it a Spanish Chateauneuf de Pop. I mean, I think that's a little bit weird because it's so fruit bombing compared to what we get from Chateauneuf de Pop, but um, it's definitely a wine that has a lot of track record. A lot of people are seeking it out. A lot of people are liking it, and um, definitely a wine that I thought was pretty decent. It's decent, it's decent. It, it feels like a winter wine to me. Something that you're gonna really enjoy on, a, on an autumn, hair. no, an autumn or a winter or a sort of early spring evening, yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. You, you, the reason you're referring to that is it's a much bigger wine. All right, how often have you had bubbles at room temperature, do you think? Probably when I, at that point where you can't really remember that you're drinking it at room temperature anymore. Very fair point. <laughs> um, you know, uh, one of the biggest controversies that surround my show at some level in the inner dorms of the wine industry with the wine nerds that pop out and want to mug me as I'm on my way to home is that I drink a lot of white wine and sparkling wine at room temperature and a lot of people disagree with me. And I understand. To me, when you are tasting these products at room temperature, you're able to see the, the, the faults more because okay. I think cold hides it. It's like the cold beer theory. Yeah, you know, well, we never drink cold beer in England. That's right. The reason we do in America is because we all start at 15 and we hate the taste and we want to drink it as cold as possible so we don't actually taste it. However, we're still cool amongst the other junior higher. You know, you know, oh, Mott thinks it's cool, so I'm going to do it. And so we have to drink it as cold as possible so we don't taste it. Because right. you know you have to drink at least 19 to 20 to be established as a cool person. That's a very <laughs> big key. I'm glad to say I don't belong to that. N nor do I. Uh, right, Ma, thank you for reminding me what we actually do here. This is the uh, RL Lagrasse 2000 Cuvée Saint Vincent Champagne, Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay, 65 US dollars. Couple of problems with that. Pretty expensive, and number two, number 65 on the New York Jets right now is Brandon Moore, an offensive lineman who is a liability, who I'm pretty angry with, so I'm already in a mindset of a little bit of anger. Right over my head. Understood. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm all about bubbles. I mean, I think we've talked about this at length, how much I love champagne. Um, I think champagne, I'm huge, huge on champagne. I think champagne is grossly misunderstood in the US, wildly under-consumed, um, great food wine. A lot of times people use um, Chardonnay and where they use, should use champagne. Oysters, champagne, yes. Uh, lobster, champagne, yes. Uh, Burger King. Champagne? Yes! <laughs> so there's a lot of opportunities. Are you into the bubbles? Personally, yes. I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you kind of can't not be. You know, I, Again, it's that typical cliche, having spent a lot of time in France, there's a lot of champagne that's being drunk. It's not being reserved to weddings and New Year's Unlike Eve. the wine when you're eight years old, champagne they put in your bottle even. I mean, it's like... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they dip your finger and they stick your finger in your mouth. Pretty um, much. And it's, it, there's just something that's nice about champagne, you know? It's, it's something that's a fun... I think it's a fun drink. And it's, a, it's a moving product. Right. It's like a toy. This is like the first video game. People are like, oh, look. So, and look at it. What's not to like? No question. I think you know what I also really like? There are some Italian red sparkling wines mm -hmm. that I love in the summer. They're Bruchetta. delicious. I've not, I don't know what they're called. They're mm -hmm. just sparkling no, and red and yeah. they're Italian and Le they're Brusco. fun and they're delicious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for being on. You're welcome. Thank you Sniffy for having sniff. us. Sniffy sniff. Sniffy sniff. There's no, there's no twirling with this. Um, I twirl. You do? I twirl all the time. But okay. you're right. Not as much. But I like twirling. It's, it's so much. different, isn't it? I love the almond, hazelnut, nutty component. Almost like cinnamon toast crunch on the nose. Okay, have you ever had okay. That cereal? I have. What do you think about that? Many Take years the cinnamon ago. out and just think of the toast crunch. No, there's something else. God, do you know what this is? I'm, I'm shocked I'm about to say this. Go. There's a certain... I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but if I'm being really honest, there's a certain cat food. I've never had cats around, but I'm so pumped. It's a pumped. certain cat food. Right that now, is you're exactly trying, you are actually actively right now transforming into a baniac. You are embracing your self-confidence, and you're sitting right next to the greatest wine expert in the world, and you're still, I'm just kidding, and you're still confident enough to say, this smells like cat food. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I love it. I wish I smelt that cat food, because then I could have said it first and taken credit for it's such amazing. a unique, awesome you know, tasting note. Let me tell you, if we've got time, I'll tell you the little story behind this. I fostered a pregnant- It's already becoming the longest episode in Wild Library TV history, <laughs> so it's another minute. Go ahead. This is what's gonna happen when you're gonna have guests in. They're gonna to wanna to get their piece in there. But no, I fostered, True. last winter, I fostered a pregnant cat who, who was going to be um, killed if somebody didn't take her home to have her babies. And I went into the pet store and I asked them what was a really good, organic, 
healthy cat food for of a pregnant mum and her babies that arrived a week later, all healthy, all now adopted into very good homes. And I took home this stuff and I didn't have that ghastly reaction to the cat food. It was actually sort of moist cat pellets that they could eat and tell the truth right now yeah i didn't please. taste it no please but no my nose you can tell us no because my nose can tell me what the thing tastes like but it had that sort of nice healthy liver and liver you know, and chicken weird. it's me now i know why all the vaniacs at home actually when i describe it go yeah he's right because as you're describing i'm like yeah you know what i have <laughs> smelled cat food before somewhere along the that's pretty cool i mean that's what it's all about i'm thrilled it's, that you it, were i'm surprised were, i'm happy Right now. Good, good. I'm Let's taste it. Let's give it a whirl. Are you? Are we gonna spit this one out too? Okay, good. Doesn't taste like cat food. Not that I would know. Yeah, it's got that sort of odd. Um, there. You know, if you if you eat um, bone marrow, mm -hmm. I don't personally, but I know people I do who do. Big time. Do you have any bone marrow in there? You're really bringing the thunder down. Now. You're really taking your tasting notes to a total. You started off with like cherries. Now it's like bone marrow with dinosaur head. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? I do. Um, to me, this is extremely apple driven. Okay. I mean, you've got to, if you, please tell me you taste apples, right? Like Granny Smith? Okay. Go like this. Okay, I'll give you that. You'll give me that, right? I'll give you that, yeah. Um, to me, it's very apple driven. I get a, a, you know, there's a lot of like that, you know, bread you know, yeah. raw bread yeah. kind of component yeah. that's coming Yeast. through. Yes. yes, very yeasty, of course. Um, so I get I get the bread, I get like apple bread, like Granny okay. Smith apple bread that sells for like nineteen ninety nine in the organic store, but okay. you buy it anyway because you're like right. at Whole Foods right. or Wegmans, you're yeah. like, oh, of course. And then you toast it and spread it with butter and yeah. hey presto. Bingo. Yeah, bingo. That's what this tastes like to me. Yeah, okay. I like this, do you like I'm this? I'm sorry that there's no cat food and bone marrow for you. I'm, 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 ex I'm definitely going home and trying cat food immediately. I mean, I've eaten <laughs> everything else. You have, yeah. I'm a big fan of this, actually. This actually brings a lot of complexity and um, and a lot of fruit and a lot of balance. This is a good bubble. This is a good bubble. You're a good bubble. It's also Dutch cheese. You know the sort of waxy Dutch are you just, cheese? You, like are we the... just gonna sit here? Can, can I counter your Dutch cheese with? <laughs> you know, it also reminds me of raccoon ear. I don't know if you've ever had that. Hair of newt. <laughs> That's yes, right. exactly. <laughs> RBI Baseball 2, freshly opened from a Nintendo package. <laughs> No way, when I was seven years old, no. <laughs> All right, now the best part. You get to ask the Vaniacs the question of the day. Anything in the world, random, go. You didn't warn me about that. I know, that's how I roll. Go, question of the day. What is the current Guinness Book of Records wine related? No, 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 this is not a quiz. This is your asking for, what is the no, third leg of, I want to know. It's a I general want to know. question. No, no, it's a general question that all the Vaniacs can answer, not go and Google and figure it out. Go. I've sniffed too much wine. I'm very hungry Go. right now. Go. Okay, I still don't understand the question. Ra you have to ask a random question that everybody can answer. Go. Very random. Go. <laughs> what? <laughs> what color shirt was Gary wearing on his first wine library show? That's more quiz-like. <laughs> You're so teacher-esque. <laughs> you are so teacher I'm pedagogic, as they say. Random question. What is your favorite blank? Who do you think can do blank? Where do you go on Thursdays? Go. <laughs> You've really got me in a, I don't know, I don't, I don't watch Wine Library often enough to understand this question. I, I liked my Guinness Book of Records question. Fine, ask your question. Go ahead. I go. already asked it. I didn't, they I didn't hear it. it. You were talking about the top, but they heard it. They did? Yeah. Because you, with a little <laughs> bit of me and a lot of Joanne, were changing the wine world. <laughs> that was awesome.